All right, this is Jeff at Quadrocopter, and today we're gonna to be talking about the 360 gimbal with the Scarlet. And it's pretty much the same form factor as the Epic. Um, they should be interchangeable. So first, for powering the whole 360, we have a 4S LiPo battery, which is 2,500 milliamps, and that is directly powering the Scarlet. As you can see through here, it's just a direct feed that goes through the tube. And then I soldered in another, um, I think it's a Limo power plug to the Scarlet. So now I don't have to worry about using any of the, um, the red volts for the Scarlet. I can actually just use the 4S. This is 16.8 volts fully charged, which is perfect for this camera. And also the 2500 milliamps, that should run this camera for hopefully 20 to 25 minutes with everything else that's going on. So 4S directly powering the Scarlet. Also, in the middle, we have a Castle BEC that takes our 4S down to um, five volts. And what the five volt does is it goes directly into, right now I'm using a Grappner receiver. And the Grappner feeds the five volts to, well, it daisy chains the power through the three radians from pan, roll, and tilt. It also provides power for the pan, roll, and tilt servo. And also I am pulling five volts out of the radian for tilt for my HD to SD converter. So if you look in the back here, HDMI is coming out of the Scarlet, coming into the HD to SD converter, and then the SD is being piped to, we are using a 1.3 LAMATE. Now the one thing is the LAMATE runs off 12 volts. So one more BEC, we're actually using a 12 volt recom. So once again, 4S, we have the Castle BEC, five volts for all the servos, radians, and the HD converter. Also, there's a recom that takes the 4S down to 12 volts, and that goes right into our LAMATE. Um, one more thing that I did on this is typically, it's kind of an awkward workflow with the Scarlet. You have to either plug in a red remote or the LCD screen to set exposure, set focus, everything else in between. And I didn't really want the servos buzzing in the background or the downlink, so I have a switch right here that actually controls my on-off. So for instance, right now, the battery's plugged in. I have power to the Scarlet. Um, if I hit this switch, I'm gonna power up everything that's five volts, which is gonna be my HD to SD converter, my radians, and my servos. And also, I put another switch on the back which actually turns on and off my downlink. So for instance, I can be screwing around with the Scarlet with the power and have both the, all the gimbal servos and radians turned off and my downlink. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, otherwise, when you have the LCD screen on and you're moving things around, the gimbal still wants to compensate. It turns into be kind of a pain. Um, the other thing that we have done is on the top, you've noticed for this payload, I'm lifting about eight, eight and a half pounds right here. We actually doubled up on our four star plates for mounting. So for instance, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vibration isolators between the Sinistar heavy lifter and the gimbal. Um, Cause what we were noticing with the heavy lifts, these four axis or the four stars were actually bending. Um, so it's just a, a more um, solid mount. And yeah, it's, it's uh, working pretty slick. All right, and then just the last thing I wanted to touch on was just where I have everything mounted. So as you see, I have this hanging from these bungee straps. It's pretty well balanced on the, this axis. And also if I turn it 90 degrees, it's pretty well balanced on that axis also. So for instance, this is where I have the battery. We're offsetting by this servo and then all the other weight is in the tail. And this is pretty much right in the middle. So what you don't want to see is when you set it up, um, as you hang it from the center, you don't want it to be extremely tail heavy or side heavy. You kind of want it to all be centered or the center of gravity of the copter. Um, and another, let me just get that in there. One more thing I wanted to touch on for the Scarlet. I am hanging this from the top. So for instance, it's just one quarter 20 coming right down the top. The whole thing is just being suspended. What I had to do is put a longer tube 
on this post to actually get the depth and also to get the length so I can go 90 degrees down. I had to extend this. This is one of our extension tubes also. So um, longer tube here and longer tube on this side and that side. All right, and then another thing we have is the adjustable tilt bars where you can control these or set these to whatever height you want. Right now, um, I have this pretty well set. If, I, if you take these belts off, off the roll and the tilt, um, it should well, well be pretty well centered. Um, of course, it's gonna depend on what type of glass you have and also what other accessories you put on the camera. Um, so anyway, that should do it for the 360 Scarlet mount. And yeah, we will do another video when we put it on the copter and show you how the whole workflow works. All right, this is Jeff at Quadrocopter and we'll see you next time.